find out soon enough. Anyways, next, coming to the stage, very funny guy. My favorite, personally, but that might sound because we're just black. Corey Marshall! Let's give a hand for Kwame. He's doing a pretty good job posting. What's up, Silver? Ain't seen you in a while, man. You good? Alright, that's cool. Um... To get up for Greg, man. That's a racist dude, man. <laughs> dude, man. It's... It's... I'm like, damn. That's not I'm like, well, he's gay, so it's all right. It's... <laughs> kind of equals out, you know what I'm saying? It's like... And I'm thinking, like, the clans wouldn't be that bad if they was gay, too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I forget it, you know. Yeah. Well, man, uh... I'm kind of glad, man, that the, uh, the, a lot of the, the Trayvon Martin case, you know what I'm saying, that's kind of killing over, and, you know, a lot of the demonstrators, I know they are extremely happy, you know, how that case is going, because they don't really have to demonstrate anymore, you know what I mean? I know they're really happy because the heat index hit, like, 120, you know? You can imagine, like, people out there demonstrating in hoodies right about now, you know? Like, could this nigga get shot in a t-shirt? Like, damn, it's... Man, it is hot. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I do do comedy, uh, of course, and sometimes, you know, forget it, um, you run into situations where, like, you just try your comedic skills in situations like that. I know a lot of people, you know, they have a guy that gets the wrong number, and he calls the phone, and you play around with him. All right. One time, there's a guy, he called my phone, right? And he was like, hey, yo, Tiffany. I'm like, nah. It's not Tiffany. Well. It's on my phone, I got the wrong number, and he hung up, you know what I'm saying? And the thing that gets me is they call back, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, hey, yo, Tiffany. I'm like, nah, this is not Tiffany. And he was like, on my phone, I got the wrong number. Then I'm like, nah, dude, you got the right number. <laughs> and if you ever want to see her again. <laughs> you know, can't do that. Another joke I play is um, I call some of my friend's house, right? And they got those, that old airship machine, you know, like with the cassette tape. And it has like the message on it, but like, hi, this is Rick and Gina. We're in our home right now. You know what to do at the sound of the beep. Beep! I usually hang up and rob them. Yeah. <laughs> I went on a, uh, I was dating this, this girl the other day because um, I'm not gay. And, um, and at the end of the night, um, I ended up with a piece of her hair, you know, like a strand of her hair, and you know, and I kept it because I'm creepy. And, and I said, all right, I'm gonna put a love spell on his hair so she falls in love with me, right? And I'm glad I did it because it was weave. And I'm like, okay, what if I was driving down the street and like there's this horse that keeps following me, you know, because it's like madly in love with me, you know. And like for like the stretch of the imagination, what if I fell in love with that horse, you know? There's certain similarities, you know, between dating a woman and dating a horse. Like, I'll still have to buy her shoes, you know? I'll still never win an argument, you know, because she'll only say, nay. I think the best thing is that, you know, if she ever disappoints me or she breaks a leg, I can shoot her. You know, that's like the biggest benefit, you know. I think another lady, um, she was a nurse, you know. And one thing I didn't like was I always gave her compliments on how she looked. You know, yo, I like your hair, you know what I'm saying? I like how you look, baby, you know, I'm spitting games. And the only compliments I got, you know, she was like, oh, well, I, I, you got some really nice veins. <laughs> I, I would love to have you as a patient. It is like nurses are really obsessed with veins for some reason. This is, are you a damn nurse? This is just like, how do I have like sexy veins or something? I don't know. It's just like, you do. I, I'm, I, I, I am single. You can ex examine them a little closer if you want. Okay, so, I do have a little cough. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm not. But, uh, Right, and then so I said we're dating, and I'm like trying to explain to her. I'm like, well, you know, this is 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 not gonna work, you know, because I noticed she she kept a cooler in her car, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of it's kind you know weird. And I was saying, you know, I I don't think this is gonna work, you know. Um, 
She was like, why, baby? You scared I'm gonna steal your heart? I'm like, no, I'm scared. You're gonna steal my kidneys and, and sell them. That's what I'm kind of concerned about. Mm, whatever. One thing that I don't like, uh, you know, the argue with the woman, and I, it's always fun trying to get the last word in, you know what I'm saying? It's like, even after there's no words to say, like you're like, Phew. and she's like, huh. You're like, mm. you're like, huh. She's like, huh, you know? Like, Phew. And she's like, eh, being like, Phew. I think the best way, like, to win an argument is to walk away and flip flops. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. That's my time, Corey Marshall. <laughs> Give it up for Corey Marshall one more time. All right, up next is the man that makes us all come together. Give it up for Bill Metzger. All right, up next, coming to the stage is Clay Schaff. Clap. Anyways, next coming up to the stage is David C. Wingfield. Quick thing. When he was doing a little auction thing, I was just, I, I all I had in my head was like, he was doing like one, like a nigga auction, like nigga, one nigga, two nigga, 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 so, thank you, David. <laughs> uh, next coming up to stage is Kenny Wingle. What's up, Dio? Hell yeah. It's the best place in the world. Look at this fan. Thanks for saying Dusky and me. All right, let's move on. What, too soon? That's what the kids said, fuckers. <laughs> Whatever. Let's start with a riddle. The hair on my balls, the book you're reading, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> if you guys can't tell by looking at me, I'm Indian. All right, take it in, take it in. The corn, not the curry. The smoke signal, not the Capital One call center. Are they still over there? So what you guys call a maze, a corn maze, I call a maze maze. All the parties that I went to growing up were BYOB. Bring your own blanket. Let's move on. You know who I am now. Let's fuck it. All right, I don't have to explain smallpox jokes to you fuckers, do I now? We can move on. Jesus Christ. Thank you. She's got the best laugh in here. Mechanicsville. Most people smoke cigarettes to be cool, I smoke cigarettes to communicate. I'm over here. Fucking over here, man. <laughs> I think that an ebonic spelling bee would never end. It's just my opinion. A white guy, a black guy, and a Native American walk into a bar. And the bar sent, bartender says, what are you guys gonna have? And before anybody else could speak up, the white guy says, I'll have all his land and his freedom. Oh, that's touchy. You guys want Trayvon Martin jokes or some shit? Seriously, even Mechanicsville, you guys are, are you all racist out and shit? Yeah. Let's see if I got some less racial shit in here. Did the Asian guy just said he flies the rebel flag? Did you say that? Oh, fuck. All right, Asian guy. Since you want to fly rebel flags, I'll tell you this. And all the mechanics. Are you riding with any of those chicks on the way home? 
he, now he doesn't want to talk. He just said, let my rebel flag fly and leave me alone. Your order will be there in 20 minutes. This is shit I don't understand, man. This, this, is, not, this, is, not ra this is not racist. Huh? You do. I know. You're riding with them now. You just answered my fucking question. You didn't want... I'll get it out of you. This is what I don't understand, man. This is like uh, Chinese food and pizzas make the same amount. They take the same amount of time to make, right? But if you call and order a pizza, they say, we'll have your shit to you in like 45 minutes to an hour. But if you call an Asian place, they're like 20 minutes, which is weird because now... If like an Asian dude is like 10 minutes late with my food, I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know what I mean? And I let an American guy deliver my pizza take an hour and a half and I'm like calling him back like, where's my fucking pizza? Where's my... Asian dude, 10 minutes late? What the fuck? What's wrong with you? So, what I've learned is that I've come to expect a lot of Asian people. Thank you, there it is. Let it go whenever the fuck you want to, man. You, you know how good you're making me feel right now? I feel great. Let's see if I can get a Yelp out or out of this one. A redneck with a job application is just like an Asian dude opening a Magnum condom. We all know they're not gonna fill that shit out. My name's Kenny Wingle. Thanks a lot for having fun, y'all. Peace out. <laughs> Give it up for Kenny Wingle. Oh, racism, it's just terrible, but funny. Uh, next coming up to the stage is John Thomas. John. Okay, uh, this is a ticking time bomb. I don't know what's gonna happen in the next five minutes. I may shit myself, but I will carry on because I'm a fucking professional. <laughs> oh boy. I like your look, sir. The fuck pussy look. I'm due with trying to get pussy. I'm done. Because his beard, long hair, and this Andrew WK thing going on. I like that. You party hard, you get wet. Ooh, you smoke PCP? <laughs> Oh boy. Oh man. My dick has plans. Not good plans. Never good plans. We're a hard dick. My, 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 dick, my dick is a terrorist. It, it holds me hostage. A hard dick, it never has good ideas. It's always going like, do it. Do it. Do it. You got five minutes till you gotta go to work. Masturbate. Do it. Come on now. Touch me. Touch me. Let's go. You can drive 70 or 65. Go ahead, boy. Go ahead. You got a 90 Corolla. You can do that shit. It goes to 110. Push the limit. I can't drive 55. <sighs> Dick has plans. Like step one. Think about building a time machine. Step two. Step three. Get in time machine and fuck all the white women from the past. Boo, boo. Are you, I'm not going back in time to fuck Harriet Tubman. I seen her. She ain't a looker. <laughs> Go back in time, fuck Cleopatra. <laughs> uh, Marie Antoinette. Because that pussy top of the empire. God damn. <laughs> Might even give me some of that Mary pussy, too. Mary of Nazarene. I don't know. I, I quit going to church. <laughs> well, once I found out that I wasn't getting wings when I go to heaven, I was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> Bugs Bunny gets wings when he dies. Why don't, I, why don't I get wings? This is bullshit. I'm due with this religion. Playing in the back, playing with cars. Uh, but my girlfriend doesn't like the time travel joke because. Uh, is that what you're gonna do? You're just gonna go back in time and fuck all the white women? Yes! What other reason could there be to build a time machine to fuck new pussy? That you can never do once it's in heaven, which I don't know if you can do in heaven. I don't know. The rules aren't clear. 
and wa- I'm gonna go back in time and watch the pyramids get built? No. You got your mind? Mmm. Uh, I feel like my, my comedy is kind of like people who uh, like the movie Drive or relate to it way too much. Like, I'm only good at one thing. I don't really like talking except in one or two syllables. And I would love just to hit people with hammers. Because if I could just stop somebody in an elevator with a hammer, that would be awesome. Nobody else is a psychopath? Nobody? Nobody's like a functioning psychopath? Look, like, if I saw my mother get killed in like a freight box, I would probably be a serial killer, but it didn't happen, so off to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, my girlfriend's always going to like summer parties. She's always getting invited to summer parties, but it's never like, when she gets there, it's never a summer party. Like, John, this is gonna be awesome. We're gonna, we're gonna eat cookies, we're gonna talk about boys. We're gonna eat tea. Eat tea, you don't eat tea, stupid. It's gonna be fun, it's awesome. We're talking about, we're gonna do girl shit. When she gets there, it's not a summer party. It's a dodo party full of just sad women buying stuff, like a woman drags in a trunk full of just sex toys and dildos, yes. I gotta sell three dildos and a dick clamp by Tuesday, otherwise my kids don't eat. <laughs> there's, a, there's one girl there who was like, that's my favorite dildo. I have like seven of them. Seven? What do you need seven for? You have a three-on-three basketball game with one extra. You got a three-on-three football game with one all-time quarterback. Oh, it's four on four. Is it? I don't know. Math is my song suit. <laughs> three on three. Who needs need seven dildos? You get two more, you got a baseball lineup. Is that her dream? Just like, I want to feel like I'm getting gang banged, but not really. I really want, I want seven of these. Like, uh, yes, seven of these. Great. Her uncle fucked her in a hope mask. All right, that's my time. <laughs> Thank you. Give it up for John Thomas. All right. Up next.